Greetings everyone, my name is Jonathan Bailey and I am from the website Plagiarism Today which can be found at PlagiarismToday.com coming around for video 2 today and I mention that because I'm actually recording this on Monday, it's going to go live Tuesday and I have a sneaking suspicion there could be some new news on this topic between then and now so I might be a little bit behind with this but what I wanted to talk about today for this video is the Jonah Lair case. It's a, This is a case of the hits keep coming. If you're Jonah Lair, you have to feel like people are beating you when you're down right now. Um, to quickly recap this one, <clears throat> uh, Jonah Lair, really, really big hotshot science reporter, um, rose through the ranks of science journalism incredibly quickly. I think he's in his early 30s and he was writing for the New Yorker, which is probably the most prestigious magazine someone in his field could hope to write for. He'd written for the New York Times, he'd written for the Washington Post, he had written um, three books, three books, two of which were bestsellers, and was just this huge star in science journalism. However, uh, first, there were allegations of self-plagiarism. He had reused quotes and material of his own in new articles for The New Yorker. The idea being he would pulled content from both his books and from uh, previous news articles. The scandal erupted, but he kind of survived that um, because a lot of people were questioning whether or not self-plagiarism was a thing at all. And basically, he kind of ducked under the crossfire between the two sides. The people who believe pl self-plagiarism is horrible and the people that believe it's not even you know, an ethical violation. Well, people started digging deeper, and eventually one reporter found that he had fabricated Bob Dylan quotes in his book Imagine. At that point, uh, Jonah Lair kind of resigned. He basically walked away from the limelight. He said he was done, and he made an unusual uh, statement, unusual in my opinion, because he said that Everything's out in the open now, and he kind of said that after the self-plagiarism thing, too, but he said it here. He doubled down on that. And I and a lot of others, especially my article on plagiarism today about this, I thought that statement was a little bit uh, questionable in its veracity, if you will. We, we were, I was much less than sure that was actually it, and it seems now there's more evidence of fabrication, more evidence of plagiarism coming out. And the hits just keep coming. There's a this big crowdsource push to go through everything Jonah Lair has written. And it seems to be turning up pay dirt <clears throat> pretty regularly. So it's a very frustrating uh, case here. He's already resigned. There's not much left that can be done to his career. I mean, he's he's done. He's disgraced. He's, you know, defrocked, if you will. I don't see him coming back in this profession anytime in the near future it'd be I mean it'd be nice to see you always like a good reform story someone who reforms themselves makes himself a better person gets a second chance and you know does something incredible with their lives but I don't think that's going to be how the Jonah Lair story ends and for better or for worse um he's definitely being beaten when he's down here but I I, I think these hits are gonna keep coming I think until every single instance of fabrication is found I don't think uh, people are going to leave. Some people are going to leave this alone, and I, I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. But the problem with it <clears throat> is that it's going to encourage people who want to make a name for themselves on the back of Jonah Lair to come forward and start analyzing his work. Maybe people that have you know their own axe to grind, or people who really have no business doing this type of enforcement, no experience with it, and it. It has the potential to produce some ugly results and set some standards that I'm not terribly fond of. I agree we should be going through his work with a fine-tooth comb, and I agree that so far the reporting seems to have been pretty good on this matter, but I'm really hoping that this doesn't, you know, sort of bring the hacks out of the woodwork, if you will, and that's my concern. Um, that being said, um, I think it's going to be interesting to see exactly what uh, all Mr. Lair did in his career, and that's one of the things, is we're definitely going to have kind of a blow-by-blow blow by the time it's done, and I don't think the later stories are going to get as much attention, but I have a feeling we're going to have a wiki or something set up where all this is stored, because there's definitely a, a, at least a small group of people very dedicated to finding every single you know thing he did that was unethical in his journalism and his writing career, and they're going to find it. The evidence is there. Those willing to look and find it. You know, it's like I said, it's more a matter of the interpretation of it than it is actually finding it. So, 
Jonah Lair taking more hits. And honestly, Mr. Lair, if you're watching this by some long shot, um, you've got a long way to go. There's a lot being done here. And as the uh, reporter mentioned, he'd only looked at one chapter of that book when he found the Dylan quotes had been fabricated. Now everything else is under scrutiny. And I had a feeling he hadn't gotten lucky and just found the one fabricated quote. And it looks like I was right. So, anything else you've done, Mr. Lair, I would strongly encourage you to come forward now and admit it. Just because it's going to save time, energy, and you embarrassment. Um, don't wait for these people. Don't wait for, no, I shouldn't say these people. Don't wait for other reporters and other people to find it. Take, take action, get out there, be proactive. That's all I'm saying. On that note, thank you very much for joining me, and this is Jonathan Bailey, signing off.